Last thing I want to talk about is changing prices. And especially in the small business world, this is a really scary thing um, because raising prices, I'm afraid if I raise my price, I'm going to lose customers. Um, but if I don't raise my price, I'm going to go out of business. So what do we do? Um, so when you're raising prices, three things that kind of you have to keep in mind. Uh, remember that value equation? When you're changing the price, you're changing the cost side of the, of the equation. So you need to keep in mind what's the perceived cost and what's the perceived value. And you want to make sure that you, you minimize the impact on the value equation with your price change. We had talked uh, earlier about the idea of a just noticeable difference, um, where 20 to 25 percent is noticeable for a price discount. If you're raising prices, try to keep it below a just noticeable difference um, so that it's not so obvious or it's not so, so much of a shock. Um, another issue is switching costs. And this is how much time and effort, not just money, does it take for a customer to change, to stop using you and using another customer? There's a big scandal going on right now with Wells Fargo, um, where they had opened millions of accounts for customers uh, just as a courtesy without even bothering to ask them. Um, and most of those customers who had accounts opened who were taken advantage of in that way are probably going to stay with the bank. Because you ever tried to change your checking account? You know, you got to think of all the automatic pays that you have, and you got to get it's such a hassle, it's hardly worth it. Um, so, in that particular instance, switching costs are fairly high. I have some flexibility around pricing when it comes to the grocery store. There's another one right down the street. Um, if I don't like the experience I have at your store, I can move right down the street. So switching costs very low, tend to be very sensitive to prices. So how do you do it, or when do you do it? Um, the most common is when there's inflation and everybody's raising prices and you have to raise prices. This is one of the downsides that we've had with the recent stagflation. Uh, where the economy isn't growing all that much, inflation isn't growing all that much, it's not it's hard to justify price increases if there's not a lot of inflationary pressure. Um, another way to, or another time signal to change the price is if you've got something new and improved, either an incremental innovation or in fact a uh, new product that you have uh, superior value and the idea is that because it is improved it should justify a higher price. And then the last reason to raise price is because everybody else is doing it. <laughs> Uh, again, when we talked about uh, oligopoly pricing and most uh, consumer packaged goods products are in a mature stage, which acts like oligopoly type pricing, it's hard to raise or decrease prices on your own. But if everybody else is doing it, then that's an opportunity to raise prices or to decrease prices. So how do you do it? And this is the one where, where my friends in small business come up against it. Because if, if you're concerned about raising your price and you don't want to lose customers, you hold off raising the price and you hold off raising the price and you hold, and then when you raise it, you have to make it a huge increase. Um, and you act as a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you've waited so long that you're you know, making a huge shock to customers and I have to, what happens is when you raise the price, it causes the customer to rethink the relationship, to rethink the transaction. Um, and you want to minimize the thinking and make it as easy as possible to follow. So rather than waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and having one huge price increase, it's better to have smaller incremental annual or semi-annual price increases depending on, uh, uh, on your particular situation. So rather than you know, going from 20 to $25, I'll go from 20 to 2050 to 21 to 2150. Um, each time you're encouraging the customer to rethink the relationship, but the change is so small, the switching costs are high enough that it's not worth changing for somebody else. And because the price increases are small, and it's in, the, in our culture it's kind of expected, right? Prices are going to go up over time, so nobody's going to say you're trying to rip me off because you're raising your price. Um, we understand. It's, and you just want to have a good reason, a justification for raising the price. Um, 
So then you need to explain to the customers why the price is going up always has to be a justification. Um, and you usually want to give notice in advance that the price is going up to allow people who have questions who are going to rethink the relationship to engage and allow you to make any negotiations that might need to happen in order to keep your customers happy. Um, and then there's one tactic that's done at retail that I thought is pretty clever. And, and we see this a lot with the consumer packaged goods products again. And this technique is you simultaneously raise the price and put it on sale. So the price used to be $3, you raise the price to $3.50 and put it on sale for $2.50. And people are thinking, wow, it's on sale, great. And then when you take it off sale and put it back at the regular price, they forget that the regular price was higher than what the regular price used to be before. Um, just a way, again, you don't, you want to minimize the attention people pay to the price increase. And in this situation, the price change that they notice is the discount. And then when the discount e ends, they're less likely to think of it as a price increase, but just we're no longer getting the discount.